Welcome back to another episode of the Hoodie and the Headband Podcast Show. Back with another episode with my boy Tariq. I I even introduced myself. What am I doing? <laughs> How am I introducing you and not introduce myself? He said Tariq. <laughs> I was like, I had to hold on. I said, Yo, hold on. What's going on here? But it's your boy Bryce. <clears throat> back with my boy, my brother Tariq. Tariq. No, I got action. It ain't a new week. It's later on in the week. Matter of fact, Thanksgiving. How's your, happy Thanksgiving, my brother. Happy Thanksgiving, boy. To those God. tuning in, watching, doing your Black Friday shopping, happy Black Friday. Hope you got everything you want. Hope your buggy's full, your cart's full, and you ain't had to give nobody no 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 type of elbow. We fight nobody. You're snatching up from the little kid. I I seen that in person once. I said, whoa. Nah, that's insane. I was Black Friday shopping and somebody snatched something from a little kid. I was like, nah. That's back when Black Friday was like, got to muscle up for real. Like, you got to, you know, you got to hit the gym for two weeks before Black Friday to get right. To be prepared. It ain't like that no more. Black Friday shops start on Tuesday now. You have. Now that's facts, though. It's like an all week thing now. Yeah. And the cyber, like, how you doing, man? How, how's your holiday so far? I can't complain, man. I'm, you know, chilling. Uh, before, uh, you know, before we get too deep into the show, I do want to give a shout out to uh, the people that have been watching our last two college episodes. We are now at 617 combined in the last two episodes. Keep running it uh, out. Um, hold on, let me find on. We're at or 619, the last two episodes. We're at 370 and 249, 372 and 249. So shout out to y'all for running those up. Um, we're going to keep we're gonna keep bringing the best content we can, and we just want y'all to keep, you know. Tuning in, man. Videos, liking the video. Word, bro. You like basketball, you like hoops, you know someone that does as well, send it to them. Hey, this podcast. These two young intelligent African American males showcasing their knowledge on college basketball. Absolutely. And there's been a subscriber jump as well. So shout out to y'all for that too. Um keep locked in yeah. with, with multiple C media. But yeah man, short work week. Um I'm off until Monday. Nice. Tap- love would love can't it. relate, but nice. <laughs> hey parks are working in schools system ish uh, uh yeah man not not much crazy going on you know just trying to enjoy my break watch these basketball games a ton of basketball games on football games today obviously it's thanksgiving um so yeah man just hopefully y'all out here you know hopefully now that you're listening to this it was yesterday hopefully y'all enjoy y'all's thanksgiving with y'all's family and y'all's friends bye with you my guy I'm good, man. I can't complain. You know, part of me really wanting to, like, grind this out and put this out on Thanksgiving because you know people ain't going to be eating until at least four, five. That's true. No breakfast. And, and the NFL slate kind of, man, I ain't going to cap. I mean, that's just me. I, that That's just me saying that because I'm not a big NFL guy. But, you know, NFL on Thanksgiving really hasn't been like that in a while. So, but... You know, Thanksgiving is a college hoops day for me. For sure. Yeah. So that's why part of me kind of want to get this out before, but being that we're recorded on Thanksgiving, whatever. But I'm good. Can't complain. Um, Glad I got a day off. Been busy. Work has been work. Um, had friends given for the first time. Yeah. And that went very well. Very well. I was in charge of mac and cheese. Save the seven charge of mac and cheese again next year. But in charge of mac and cheese. Um, you know, it's some doubters. There's some people skeptical about it, but everybody enjoyed it. So I'm glad. Maybe uh no, no I did not make potato salad. Maybe banana put it <laughs> as well. And, and yeah, uh the homies enjoyed everything. Everybody made great contributions, and yeah, I don't know why we didn't do it, but I'm glad my boy, my boy, shot my boy Vic. Glad my boy brought up the idea, like, yo, we should do Friendsgiving. I'm like, yo, yeah, why haven't we done a Friendsgiving yet? We've been friends for like 
handful of years now. We should have been Nimbus. So yeah, it's a good turnout. Everybody came, everybody came out, everybody drew everything. There was not a single leftover. Jeez. There's maybe a couple pieces of chicken left over, but it's about it. Everybody don't ate everything. Like my boy's going crazy. My boy's going ham on a ham, okay? <laughs> and then like, bro, it was crazy. So like so and so he went back for seconds. He was like really just chopping up the ham. And I'm just like, he a few, he 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 a few slices from just biting the ham itself. <laughs> He had a few oh. slices from biting that ham just straight up. Like, I was like, man. Cause like he would, he kept asking us, he's like, yo, before I put this out, y'all want some, you want some, whatever. And I was like, for the tenth time, no pork on my fork. <laughs> I don't eat pork. For the eleventh time, I don't eat pork. He's like, all right. And I was like, he's like, bro, he probably said, Oh, you don't eat pork? Bet. Now I said that we all laugh like sorry, geeky. Cause that's literally what he probably said. Like that's literally what he said to himself. He's like, Oh, you want to eat pork? Bet. And I had my portion of the damn ham. But all in all though, good turnout, good vibes. Um, great to have that time with Mis Amigos. And now it's Thanksgiving. Good eats part two. Good food, got some, got some good games, put in some good work. I know I'm working on a holiday, not working, but put like I don't know. I'm always working, bro. I I, I stay busy. I it's no rest with me. Even when I rest, I'm just like, all right, I'm resting too much. I need to do something. That's a fact. But yeah, man, let's get to it, man. We got a good show for y'all today, and you know we have. Where do you we want to this? We did tier list for tier list first before we get into the sports. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. let's do that. Let's, let, let, let's do tier list. All right, so you guys know the tiers from last time. You have great, you got straight, you got mid. Mm-hmm. Right. So this week we're doing Thanksgiving dishes. Absolutely. All right. Got first and foremost in the great tier, stab macaroni and cheese. Absolutely. Uh depending on who make it. If you, if depending on who it. make it, yes. Cause cause I done seen and, and me, and me we discussed in, in pre pod. <laughs> I ain't gonna I, I ain't gonna say too much. I ain't gonna go too much. But mac and cheese is mac and cheese. You got macaroni and you got cheese. You ain't got nothing else crazy in there. Ain't no raisins. Ain't no breadcrumbs. This is an anti... This is a no breadcrumb family. All right? <laughs> this is a no breadcrumb podcast. You got breadcrumbs on your Mac? You need a pack. <laughs> you got breadcrumbs on your Mac? You need a pack, man. No stove top Mac. No craft Mac and cheese. No nah, hell no, nah, bro. No, That's the thing I don't play about on Thanksgiving, bro, is my mac and cheese, bro. Bro, like, listen, mac and, you you mac, you mac, and mac and cheese up to the OGs, bro. You leave that to uh, up to the grandma, auntie, your moms, yes, pops, maybe. That's but you, 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 your big cousin want to experiment, and be the one to try to make nah, mac, mac and cheese this year. Respectfully, hell tell them nah. hell no. Hell no. Nah. Thanksgiving ain't the time to experiment, man. At all. At all. No. no. You got to have the overliables at the table, bro. You got to have auntie on the greens. You got to have mom dukes on the on the chicken. You got to have grandma on the mac and cheese. You got to have the other big cousin on the yams. Everybody got to play their role, bro. Ain't no, ain't no time for switching roles. Come on, man. Ain't no time for the bench players to get, get, get burned. <laughs> It's not time for the pitch plays to get burned. This is a championship game. <laughs> the finals is on the line. Larry OB is in the kitchen. It's not time it's, it's for the 12th man to get burned in game two. 
I don't care if all your parents paid the same money. Bro, it's game seven. If listen, oh my god, twelve man get burned at the end of the game if it's a blowout. But it's game seven. It's game seven, man. It's game seven. It's game five. Four for the W. It's a national championship for college. It's time. It's time to lock in. It ain't time for for. All right, we're going to experiment with this lineup. I almost cussed there. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Thanksgiving is not the time to play around, bro. I'm so serious. I'm blessed to never have a bad Thanksgiving. Knock on wood. I'm glad that you know, ain't nobody came through with some some rhythmatized or whatever. And some some I'm glad I never had to look at the food and be like, what the hell is that? You know? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I know it's too late because we're recording this on Thanksgiving and not releasing on Thanksgiving. But do everybody a favor and keep them plates off the TL there. I knew you was gonna say this. Keep them plates off the TL. Cause I'm a judge. I'm a judge, bro. I mean, he says this shit every year, bro. Keep keep save us save us a favor and keep that keep keep it off the tee. I'm about to, I'm sorry to me. This is such a this is such a subject I'm passionate about. Like I'm I'm gonna slipped up and cuss a couple times just now. But <laughs> oh my god. Nah, speaking of friends giving, I'm not gonna say too much, but speaking of friends giving, I saw somebody had a friends giving. I saw the mac and cheese. But <laughs> <laughs> Why is the mac and cheese in a bowl? What? <laughs> what? The mac and cheese is in a bowl. I had to rewatch that story like three times. I was like, "What? What's going on here?" Hey, what? They tried. I don't know what the aesthetic was. It looked like they had like. Certain, like all the dishes and stuff, like they got a whole set from Target or something. Really, like they just, hey, they really jazzed it up. They spent more time on the decor than the food. Than the yeah, I'm looking at the plate. I'm like, that ain't it. She could have, she she she, she could have left that all. She could have left that in the camera roll. <laughs> oh my god! Listen, man, if your plate ain't low vibrational, dog. If your play ain't low vibrational, keep it off the TL. <laughs> Back to the tiers list. Mac and cheese, great tier. Nah, uh, it's that's great is the top, right? That's the highest one. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's what yeah, I said. Great. All right. Um, what we what else are we doing? Sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes, great. 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 My mama's sweet potatoes. With the marshmallows in it, come on, great. Come on now, what are we doing? Uh, Bryce said he don't do these, but mashed potatoes for me. Mashed potatoes, it's I'll say straight, like it's acceptable. It's acceptable. They great for me. Great. Mashed I blame my. Good. I blame my. Mashed potatoes mom. is a good dish. Me personally, I don't really eat mashed potatoes at Thanksgiving. I can't. Remember, I can't recall having mashed potatoes on my plate at Thanksgiving. Now, hot take. It's going in the mid tier. Turkey. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That ain't a hot take for me. Mid. Overrated. Mid. Overrated. Dry. Just. Give me them turkey wings, though. I'll, hey, listen, I'll fight over the turkey wings. I know so only two. I'm getting, I'm leaving with something. I'm getting one. I'm getting one, damn it. And if I don't get one, I ain't getting none. <laughs> Race on one right now. Um, Ham. I know you don't eat pork. Crash, no basura, bottom oh, you, tier. You crazy. No pork on my pork, man. No, no I mean, no, 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 no pork on my pork, man. Before you stopped eating pork, where was it? It was still kind of mid for me. Oh, damn, that's crazy. Only thing I miss about pork probably is like pork chops and bacon meat. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, my mom... I mean, I'll enjoy ham on sandwiches. That was straight. Like, boards that spice ham, but like, 
Honey Glaze Ham from like after the, I don't know, ham ain't really. I, I didn't, I never really desired ham before I stopped eating pork. Like before I stopped eating pork, I didn't really eat a lot of pork, and that's why it's been easy for me not to eat pork because not like, damn, I'm missing out on this, I'm missing out on that. Nah, I'm not missing out on nothing. So, uh, for me, uh, my mom, my mom get the honey ham, she cook it with the pineapple spears mm. in the middle. Mm. That 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 shit's great mm. for me. I only mm. eat like six or seven things. I'm a little picky on Thanksgiving. So oh, I'm a picky eater. I got dude. I got the ham. I don't mean to offend that nobody food. if I don't get your get your that's dish. Potato. Yeah, I don't. There's a lot of stuff people be making. I don't need to offend anybody if I don't get what you made on my plate, but it's simple stuff on my plate. It's stuff that I eat and stuff that I don't eat. Just yeah, leave it at that. Green bean casserole, not doing. Casserole not at all. I've never had casserole. I'm sorry. Potato salad, egg salad, not doing. None. Like, and my, my family, mom, it, it, allegedly, my family makes some mean potato salad. That's cool. Allegedly. I'll never know. Yeah. My mama make uh oyster stuff. Devil eggs? No, I don't. I'm not eating no devil. Oh, eggs. you don't like devil eggs? You crazy? No. And my mom makes devil. mean devil eggs. Apparently, allegedly. Eggs. My mom allegedly devil they be wearing they be wearing on my mom new devil eggs. And I'll be like, cool, I I whatever. But that's our tier list for Thanksgiving. No, Ooh. no, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. We ain't get through all of it. We ain't get through all of it. What a, what collard greens at? Oh, collard greens. Uh, they, they, ain't, straight? they ain't on my plate. Hit or miss. They ain't on my plate on Thanksgiving. They they hit them. Uh, collard greens and rice. They that's on my plate. Collard greens and rice. Yeah, I ain't do rice. One of the two. Some type of greens and rice is on my plate. Did match that rice. Do you like dressing or stuffing? Uh, I like gravy on on stuffing. Okay. Uh, skip that. I put the stuffing right next to the mac and, uh, to the mashed potatoes, the mac and cheese next to the sweet potatoes, the ham, the bun, or like the the roll, Hawaiian roll. Yeah. yeah. That's my plate right there. Okay. Okay. That's my plate. What about chicken? What about chicken on Thanksgiving? We, don't, we ain't never do chicken on Thanksgiving. Ham wow. and turkey. That's it. Wow. Yeah, I've never I've never done turkey or chicken on Thanksgiving. Mm. I like, like chicken. Chicken, chicken would be the beef. Ham, I would do beef, indulgent. Turkey. That, that was all because I, I feel like what you eat typically is like stuff that you don't eat during the year. No, like facts, you, facts. You don't know. eat stuff during the year. Is different from during the year, you don't eat sweet potatoes during the year. Like, I've never had sweet potatoes not on Thanksgiving or Christmas. Like, I that's the only that. I've ever had. for the most part. Yeah, I mean, it'd be like off times that I do have some yams on like a Sunday dinner. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's fair. Like I said, Sunday dinner is different from Thanksgiving dinner, but it's like right. you have a lot of the same stuff. A lot of stuff, yeah. On Thanksgiving dinner. All right. Uh, size and desserts. Cornbread. Cornbread good. Right, the right cornbread can be any yeah. great. There's, there's somebody in South Carolina that was friends of the family, and their mama made cornbread that tastes like cake. That shit's dangerous. She lived in Goose Creek too. Well, they lived in Goose Creek. Um, it's an older, it's an older couple. Like it's an older dude's mom though, so it's an older lady. But mm. we tried that. He was like, "Yeah, y'all gotta try this. Y'all gotta try this." I said, "I forgot I said, we, where you was." You this place, boy? I forgot where you was. Wow. Where that that on oh, no, it's it's a place down here that serves um what you call it cornbread that tastes like cake. Mm. I think it. I think it's Gillies. Mm. I'm gonna say it's Gillies. Yeah. They serve cornbread like that. That apple pie that, my ghost. Cornbread is like that. Um, all right. Bye. You going to the sweet potato pot? You going to the sweet potato pot or the pumpkin pie? I'm going to the apple pie. Great. Okay. If I gotta choose between sweet potato and pumpkin, I'll go pumpkin. Sweet potato pie, I cannot do. You cannot do? Cannot do sweet it. Sweet potato pie, all right. But yes, apple pie. All right. Uh banana pudding. I don't really eat banana pudding like that. I'm not a big banana. I think that's the. I think that's the consistent. Either you love banana pudding or it's like yeah. you don't care for it at all. Right. Me, like, I love nobody, banana pudding. Nobody in my family. Much so I made banana pudding for Friendsgiving. Yeah. Yeah. Um, nobody, nobody really made it for us. So like I was like, 
if we don't have it, I'm not like, oh my God, why y'all ain't make banana pudding? Like, I never really had it. So I'm never, I'm not even like, that's not even in my brain on Thanksgiving. Like, I'm Gosh, not. Like, I was like a teenager when I first tasted it. And I was like, whoa, that's what this is? What is Yo, that? I need more of this. <laughs> yeah, I had banana pudding when I was a kid, but it was never like, oh my God, like, that's crazy. Like, it was just banana pudding. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, well, that's our tier list for Thanksgiving. Um, yeah, but let's get into it. Um, what do you want to dive into first? All right, we're gonna do our starting five lineup of our favorite players in the country. So you can either go your favorite five players or you can build a lineup of point guard, shoot guard, three, four, five. Not gonna lie. I probably could build mm, I got what one, two, three, four, five. I put seven. I got seven players here. I put I put way more than seven down. I know you did. If Just I could put seven, I, I knew you got twenty one. <laughs> I might have twenty one. Let me count. <laughs> counting counting my lineup. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two. <laughs> he I hit that round of money. You said twenty I said twenty one, he got twenty two. That's crazy. There's, there's some and there's players that I left off because I knew you was gonna pick them. Like I don't have Juju because I know you're picking Juju. I I don't have Olivia Miles because I know you're picking Olivia, and I don't have Hannah because I know you're picking Hannah. <laughs> Here we go. Matter of fact, I have them in a row. It's all right. I'll just go ahead and say mine because it's only seven. So I got I got Raven Johnson, Juju Watkins, mm-hmm. Hannah Hidalgo, Olivia Miles, Paige Beckers, Caitlin Clark, Cam Brink. Mm. Yeah, I didn't put Caitlin because I knew he was picking her too. I obviously, put Paige, but obviously, I know you put Paige. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think because I ain't, I only have one big on the list, you know. Like, I feel like I could have put Angel there, but it's like, oh, I forgot about Angel. <laughs> I don't know. I thought about Angel, but then it's like, uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. You got a lot of good bigs out there, like. Camilla. Camilla, you got what's my call? Alyssa Pilly, you got mm-hmm. um Jenna Johnson, yeah, Lauren Batch. You're not stealing her. She's in my starting five. No, <laughs> I'm just naming names here, sir. Just naming names. Uh, um, Kiki Ariafin. Yeah. Oh, uh, Ariafin. That's how you say her name. I'm yeah, glad yeah. you said her name because I always messed up the name. I said it last week. I know. Let's say Kiki. Oh, no, you can't because there's Kiki Rice, too. So, yeah, well, if we're talking about Stanford and not Stanford versus UCLA, you can say Kiki. Okay. And then you got. Oh, how I forget to put Maddie Westbell on my list? I know she's on yours. She in the starting five. I know. All right. I can't say that. <laughs> All right. Um, we probably going to end up running a small lineup. My my lineup is small too. Oh, that's it. I'll probably run. Oh, that's tough. Mm. Uh. No, my lineup is not small actually. All right, so I'll probably run. I'll probably run. All right, I'll probably run Hannah, Olivia, Juju at the three, Camilla mm-hmm. Camp. That's not bad at all, actually. That's definitely not small. No, it's not small, yeah. Because Juju can play the three. Juju's, what, six foot? Six one? That's why I said, yeah, Juju's a bigger guard, so that's why I yeah. He can play the three for sure. Yeah. Then you can interchange Hannah and Olivia. It really don't matter who played the one and two. Yeah. And Hannah, if you put Hannah on the on the ball handle, she's going to get him hell. So. Now, I don't know. I want to include Raven Johnson in this, but I really just want to put – uh, uh, Hannah and Olivia together because I'm surprised you in Malaysia. We, I know, I thought about it too. I was thinking about it just now and never like running all like, that. Just be too many line. guards, just a four guard, one big lineup. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like really, that would really be listen, that would really be oh, they nice. That good, that, yeah. that'd be a really that good, nice lineup. Too. That's what I was expecting you to do. Just put out everybody that what, four four guards and damn Cam Brink. <laughs> you didn't even put out Caitlin out there, which is crazy. 
I ain't put Kalen on there, nah. But I'm not surprised by that. I'm I'm not surprised that you didn't put her on there. All right, so yeah, my list, yeah. So Hannah, Olivia, Juju, Camilla, Cambrick. Mine. Pages. Ain't nothing going down low. It's block parties. And coast to coast. Down. Coast to and coast block parties. From SC, to, from SC to, to, to to Cali, block party. Yeah, we we, we got to make sure we shoot. We shoot mid, mid-range pull-ups and threes. Get into the free throw. Oh, actually, we get into that free throw line. Because one, one of them go foul. <laughs> oh, I'm at... Ooh, no, I'm about to say something crazy. I'm about to say something crazy. I'm about to say something crazy. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, 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 I'm about to say something crazy, man. But go ahead with yours, dog. All right, so if y'all know me, y'all know Paige my point guard. Tahina Pow Pow my two. Maddie Westbelt. Actually, we'll flip that. Peyton Verhost is at the three. Maddie Westbelt is at the four. That's not crazy, though. In a situation, you you wild. Uh, That's why I thought it was crazy. And Lauren Best at the five. So my star line, my lineup is Paige, Tahina, uh, Peyton Verhoes, Maddie, Lauren Best. But I, I, as you know, I got I got mad names. So I had Cam Brink, but I knew you was gonna take her. I had AZ, Rikia Jackson, Sonya Citrone, Mar Braun, Amaya Battle, Kiki Rice. Liz Kitley, Georgia A. Moore, Shaylee Gonzalez, Celeste Taylor, Cody McMahon, Caitlin Chen, Gabby Gregory, Jada Williams, um, Cody McMahon. Wait, did I say Caitlin? I said Cody McMahon. JC Sheldon, that's what I meant to say. Yeah, it's a lot of players, though. It's a and, lot of good players, yo. And that's sure. just, like, the names that I can think of on the top of my head. I'm sure there's players that I miss. Like, I'm going to go back. Like, Alyssa Pidley, not on my list. Gianna Neekins, not on my list. Like, it's a lot of players that I miss. Low key, but, Rikia Jackson. I just said Ricky Jackson. She was the okay. second in my She was after AZ. Okay. Yeah. What's your team again? I'm writing it down. Paige, Tahina, Peyton Verhoes, Maddie Westbell, Lauren Betts. A couple of these is because I watched them play in the under 19. You said Peyton Verhoes. Who else? Lauren Betts, Maddie Westbell. Okay, cool. I, actually, I watched Maddie. It was what? It was it Peyton, Lauren, and Maddie that played under 19 that year? I know for sure Peyton and Lauren played. No, it was Sonia. It was Sonia Citron, Peyton Rojos, and Lauren Betts that played under 19 that year. All right, cool. Yeah, okay. Um, I might do something with this on Twitter and Instagram. Yo, this for sure went. You went. <laughs> You went, you went with the you went with the guys. I went not with the guys. You went with the with the <laughs> I, know. I went I went with the simple mid range pulley. I'm gonna hit this three. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna hit this spin fadeaway. <laughs> but Lauren Best down there, Lauren Best versus Camilla Cardoso would be fun. That's gonna be a battle. And and she see Cam Brink over there like, hey, I I should have got more PT last year. Listen, I can't wait for that matchup, bro. Like, I'll be locked in. I don't care. I will call off work. Like, I don't care. <laughs> oh, I'm bugging. Well, I wrote this list with, without UConn players on it, besides Paige and AZ, because I didn't want to be biased. But obviously, Leah Edwards. Yeah. Was on, so, like, players players that are on UConn are on this list. Malaysia Falawale, like, we didn't name her, but obviously, yeah. she's on this list. I like Breezy Hall, too. Breezy Hall is really fun to watch. She's. Mm-hmm. Very athletic. Mm-hmm. Um, Cheyenne Sellers. Yeah, mm-hmm. see, I'm going to just move on because I'm going to just start naming mad players. You didn't even like, name uh, Haley Van Liff? Damn it. Haley, that's that's, that's your girl. Damn. That's, that's where you won. I, I looked at LSU and was like, like after after just now, like I was like, when I was thinking of teams in my head, I thought about LSU and was like, I was like, Big Foe. Like not bad, but I, she's not like one of the players that I'm like, oh, I gotta watch Big Four tonight. Like, mm-hmm. and that's that's not even like trying to throw no shade at all. It's just not like a player that I'm like, okay, like, like Anissa Morrow when she was playing at DePaul, like she she's a really good player. Like I I enjoy watching her play, but it wasn't like oh Anissa Morrow's playing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Haley though, yeah, Haley definitely should be on my list. That's my fault. Cause I mean, there's like Sailor Poffenberger. I forgot to put her on the list. Um, at Arkansas, so it's a couple of players that should be on this list that I forgot. So. 
yeah, Haley Van Lith definitely should be on the list. Because yeah. I've been rocking her since high school. So, yeah, definitely should have been on her. Word. Well, yeah, I'll this up on Twitter. I might not. If I do, y'all can chime yeah. in. With me. Put it up there anyway. Go ahead. Honestly, it's it. I ain't got nothing else to do today, man. I'm out of here. Hey, hey, my team got my team got some 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 rhythm to it. You know, we getting buckets. You know, we may not defend a lot. I mean, our point guard and our center can defend. Maddie can Maddie can defend a little bit, but we we gonna give y'all some buckets now. Man, we got buckets too, bro. We gonna give y'all some buckets. That hand that hand and page matchup will be real fun. I can't wait to see that. Hello. I can't wait to see Paige versus Hannah because Hannah gonna bring that energy and that's gonna make Paige turn up. And I love when Paige is turn- like when Paige playing calm, like she cool. But once she turn, like she get the yelling, like I don't know what it is. You wake her like, up. You you get her like I think last last week she got hit in the eye, got hit in the face, went stupid, <laughs> went crazy after that. They was like, man, why you hit her in the face? I think it was uh, against Maryland. Yeah, mm. it was against Maryland. We was like struggling, and then. I was layups in a row and one. Ashton Shea come down and one. Now we up 12. Like, let's go. That's how you do it right there. But yeah. That's our that's our lineups. Word. Um moving on. I'm talking about what? You want something LSU real quick? Uh sure. So uh, since the last pod. Like, Adrius is not with the team. Nope. Um, she missed the last what two games? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Hasn't joined the team after you know what's been going after what's going on with, you know, the talks between the beat between the moms and just with everybody in general over at LSU. And I set it off. Let me stop. But <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, now Angel hasn't joined the team or hasn't been with the team, whatever. Uh, but Kill Monkey did um reiterate that she is still on the team, she's still part of the team, she's just not with the team for whatever reason. Um, then rumors came out that Angel is um, whatchamacallit, that her grades is probably what's making her ineligible. Um, I don't know, this has been a rumor for some time that she's had a low GPA, but. Yeah, I ask you, sir, what is the solution to fix this LSU team? I, have no idea. I don't know because we don't know what's going on. I can't give a solution to I don't know what the problem is. Honestly, yeah. Like, but, I don't know. If, I don't know if it's academics. I don't know if there was an issue in the locker room. Like, from what Kim Mulkey said, she said, when stuff goes on in the locker room, she either doesn't know enough or she knows too much, but she's not going to put her player – like, she's not going to talk about it publicly. So, yeah. All we can do is speculate, and I don't like to do that. So, yeah, outside it looks crazy. From the outside, it looks like she's suspended. It looks like she's not with the team. From inside, she could be suspended, but we won't know that unless they come out and say she's suspended for this reason. Like last year, she didn't get, she didn't make the All American team. I think, I think it was the All American team. Um, and a lot of people said that was because of her grades and her GPA. Like you had to have a certain GPA to make the All American team. Oh, really? Um, yeah, it was it was one of the teams at the end. I'm pretty sure it's the All American team, but um, people yeah. were very angry that she because she was like top three in National Player of the Year last year. It was her, Aaliyah, and Caitlin, and she didn't make the All American team. People were like, "Why didn't she make All American team?" But then um, it came out that you know you have to have a certain GPA. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure um, that was a part of the like that was the reason that she didn't make All American team last year. But I'm not one to point fingers or to talk about anybody else's personal issues. Um, if it's a, if it's a academic thing, hopefully she, you know, is able to figure it out um, and get her grades right. If it's a, a team thing, hopefully they can get it together and, and figure out what, you know, what they need to do as a team to come back together. And um, Other than that, it's all speculation. I don't, I don't really get into too much of that, but uh, one thing I do want to say is I, I'm not a fan of people, you know, going at Angel Reese for, you know, enjoying her su- enjoying her summer and enjoying her life. Like Yeah. We we asked we asked for her to get like we asked for players and black players, especially in the women's game, to get these opportunities to get this these endorsements. And then when they do and they take advantage of those, you throw them back in their face. They did the same thing to Naomi Osaka. They did the same thing to Serena Williams. 
They're doing the same thing. They did the same thing as Carrie Richardson with her situation. They're doing the same thing to Angel Reese right now. Like, oh, you just spent your whole summer with your boyfriend, you know, going out and on, going on vacations. What's wrong with that? Why shouldn't she? She just came into way more money than she's ever had in her entire life. What would y'all do in that situation? Y'all go stay in the gym every single day? Like, obviously, we all, you know, we all want people to work on their games, but I also want people to enjoy their life. Like, Angel Reese has made it abundantly clear that her life is, I mean, she loves basketball, but it's not her entire life. She's made it abundantly clear. Like, not everybody, like, it's easy to say, it's, it's easy to say behind the phone what you would do in a situation, but you don't know because you're not in that situation. I know for a fact, if I came into, if I had the season that she had, win a national championship, get all the accolades, get all the endorsements and all these music videos and all this other stuff. Like, obviously, I'm still going to be wanting to work in the gym, but I'm also going to take advantage of these opportunities. I'm not just going to turn them down because I need to go play basketball right now. Like, like y'all don't, y'all don't make men do that. So why do the women have to do it? There's a huge double standard when it comes to endorsements and the way that women athletes are treated once they get to a certain point and when the way men athletes are treated. Like, nobody, nobody says anything about certain players getting endorsements and then their careers falling off. But if a girl, you know, if a woman athlete struggles a little bit, they like, oh, it's because she ain't working because she got all that money now. Like, people are throwing shade at Naomi Osaka. I'm like, she just beat Serena Williams in the U.S. Open. Of course she's going to get a bunch of endorsements now. Like, that's what happens in tennis. You're, mm-hmm. you're, you play by yourself. So all of your money, most of your money comes from endorsements, especially if you're not winning, like, the, the top tournaments. So she wins. She's on billboards. She's going to Japan. She's, you know, learning her heritage, all types of other stuff. And people are like, oh, she ain't even worried about tennis no more. She, she went on to win three more majors, by the way. And then the same thing happened with Emma Raducanu when she won, like, when she was, like, 19, 20 when she won. Yeah, she had 18 and 19, yeah. And she got a bunch of endorsements, and people are like, oh, well, now she always injured because she don't be working out. You don't know what she does. Like, you y'all don't like y'all don't do this to men. Like when men, when when dudes come into the league, you ain't say, Oh, Victor's struggling because he, you know, he signed with this team. Or you ain't say Scoop. I think I think struggling because he signed with these dudes, and now he think he he hot shit because he, you know, he with Nike or he with Jordan or he with this. Like it don't happen the for them. Criticism's different for men. It's weird. It's weird, but it's different. Like, you know, people get on James Harden for going to the strip club. I get that. Or like, whenever, what was it? I think whenever the the Nets beat Philly. Mm-hmm. It was when the Nets beat Philly the first time he was there, uh, the first game he was in Philly, whatever. Or I don't know. I remember it was a loss. And then boy got blown out. And he's out mm-hmm. the club that same night in New mm-hmm. York. I mean, I get it. It's your man's birthday and whatever. But, like, it's not a good look. Like, you go out, out, out and about, you hanging out with the rappers and stuff, that everybody, like, oh, this man James Harden don't care. This man, you know, whatever. Like, Meek Mill came out in the, in the interview was like, yeah, man, that man James Harden go out to practice. And as soon as you leave practice, he come, you know, kick it with us. We in the studio all night. All night till 4 in the morning. Doug on he going to practice next next day at like six, seven. Mm-hmm. And everybody's just like, that's why James be playing like that. Cause he 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 be in the damn studio with, with these rappers, be all up under under them and stuff, and he don't be working on his stuff, whatever. Like, I don't know. Criticism is just different, man. Like people just find anything, anything that they don't really like and agree with and use mm-hmm. that against it. And so in Angel Reese's case, it's if she did post, if she light and getting all these endorsements and, and everything, and it's like, oh, she's everywhere getting this, that, and not the third, but she can't do this, or she didn't do that. It's like Sabrina, like when Sabrina being in the all in the music video, all in the in the song. Let me see. I keep quoting, I keep quoting Suge Knight here whenever, because <laughs> you know how Suge Knight was like, if you want your executive producer all in the video, all in the song, it's like pres. Like, if you don't want this person present, is what I'm getting at. It's like, this person's presence is filled. Anyways, Sabrina Inescu, all in commercials, endorsements, whatever. People are like, oh, yeah, they're giving it to the wrong person. And I, 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 I've I been on here and I've said that. Mm-hmm. I'll admit it. But, uh, yeah, no, like, people thinking, like, oh, they're giving this to the wrong person. Oh, look how they're playing now, stand up, whatever. Like, people do that because they don't agree with it. And so in this case, 
listen, you think going into that national championship game, they want to LSU to win? The people that are saying, like the naysayers right now, you think they want to LSU to win? The story for the whole season was Caitlin Clark. For the whole season. I mean, Angel Reese had a great season too. And that's why Angel Reese was in them same talks with Caitlin and Aaliyah, as you mentioned. But whole time, everybody wanted to see Caitlin Clark. Not everybody, but the masses, you know, many of college, college basketball fans wanted to see Caitlin Clark. She beat South Carolina in the Final Four. And, you know, there was, all right, yeah, she beat the reigning champs. A certain side, though. Let's be, let's be real. Like a certain yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely a certain <laughs> side. Definitely a certain side. <laughs> And even that side that wanted LSU to win is now turning against Angel Reese. That's yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. The people that were caping for her are now turning against her, and they oh, don't the, even the, the switch is crazy. Yeah, and they don't even know what's going on. There is the speculation. Thing, yeah. That's my that's my whole thing. Is like y'all wanted her to get these these things, and if she didn't post about anything, you would never know that she had any of these things. What would, then? What would you lean on? Right. What, what would you? Say? Oh, she has. Thing, right, like, or listen, how do you had. Has she not been in these, in the music video? Has she not been in these campaigns? Has she not had any of this? What would have been an excuse then? What then they would have been like, oh, oh she's she not working in the gym hard enough. She ain't doing no, nothing. Then, then it would have been, if, if she didn't pop up with none of this stuff, they'd have been like, well, why she didn't get no endorsements? Why she didn't get this? Why she didn't get that? But that's the crazy part about it is they would be complaining that she didn't oh, no, they would be, Yeah, I'm saying, yeah, they would be complaining. I'm saying, not even. I'm not even thinking of last year. I'm thinking of this year. Mm -hmm. This year. If she didn't have all that stuff that she got last year, and she came into this year, and she played the way she played, what would be the excuse then? Would it be, yeah. would it be, oh, she's going on trips, oh, she's she's doing this challenge on TikTok, or, right. bro, you can't, you can't, we can't, we can't be the fun police, dog. I'm like, come on, bro. She's 20-something, she, 21, she's 21, she ain't gonna be 21 again in her life, like, she let her enjoy her college time, bro. Like, come on now. Don't don't try and be the fun police and limit limit it. Yes, I understand criticism is warranted in certain circumstances, but I don't know. Like sometimes I get it, but sometimes I don't. Like I get proper criticism, you know? It's like, all right, she, you know, needs to work on her moves, her post moves, or she needs to work on her defense. She needs to work on how to read different offenses or whatever the case is, whatever. But I don't know, equating that to fun in the summertime, I don't like that. Now I say well with me. Yeah. Yeah. But all in all, though, man, I do hope this injury situation, the LSU situation does get solved. There is a solution here. I would like to see LSU at, you know, with, with all, their, all, all of their – players together because this is a talented team we've never seen a team with this oh no we have in certain like circumstances or whatever but built in this way you know having the top players from different teams all on one team at the same time i think everybody was hopeful for it you know everybody looked everybody was hyped i'm not even an lsu fan and i was hyped for lsu getting anisa morrow and Haley van lift to join in the recent flaw jay i yeah. was hyped for it it's good for the game. I also think part of the issue, I wouldn't say the issue, but part of the part of this is that them joining up brought a different different kinds of fans into the women's basketball space. Yeah. Which is good, which is not a bad thing per se, but you bring those fans in and they still have the same outlook that they have regardless. If, yeah. if that like no, yeah, it, I, I can when, that. when this news hit, like when the news hit that they were that Haley Van Lith and then Anissa Morrow was coming, it wasn't just women vs basketball fans talking about it. It was people everywhere talking about it. So then when you get to that point, like that's when that's why it's so much more like pushing. Like this is more like men's narrative, yeah, than it's like women's basketball narrative. Yeah. And I think that's what's really pushing it across is like, oh, we not rocking with Angel Reese like that no more. It's the same thing they did to Shakira Richardson when she got caught, and now she's back up. And now people are like, yeah, y'all, y'all were sleeping on Shakira. Like, no, y'all tried to write her off. Yeah. Like, and now, and she didn't, she didn't quit. And that, like, if Angel Reese come back this season and play great, then they gonna be like, yeah, we was telling y'all about Angel Reese and this LSU team. Like, I bet you if I go back in your tweets, it'll say like the stuff that 
you don't want people to know you said it, but we spent, we, we spent a good on yeah, we spent a good bit on this. We can we can jump to something else. Yes. Um. All right. So we had some great games last weekend. As uh, actually, before before we do the recap, um, just want to send a shout out to AZ Fud. Oh man, yeah, bro. Oh, that news hurt my heart yesterday, bro. Yeah. Um, she had a medial meniscal tear and tore her ACL in her right knee. Um, she tore her ACL in her junior year um, at a USA camp or a USA three on three um, to um, see who would play in the national or in the Olympics. Um, uh, she also hurt her knee in sophomore year um, when Aaliyah was knocked into her leg. So um, she's had some knee issues in the past. So this is definitely um, a hard one to see and like to, to have to, you know, deal with. I know, especially for her, like it's got to be, it's got to be mentally and physically draining to try to have to do this again. Um, after she did it in high school, and I remember reading, um, the article about her injury when she was coming to UConn, um, and just like how, um, upset her dad was and, and stuff like that. So I know like, her family got to be hurting as well, and obviously like her friends and her teammates like Paige and who just went through the same injury. Um, last year and Ice Brady just went through the injury last year. So um, I just hope that, you know, the people close to her are wrapping their arms around her and um, definitely sending praise for her because, you know, she's a unreal talent, a transcendent talent in this, uh, this sport. And it would suck to see her not be able to, you know, do what she does best. But at the end of the day, I would rather her be able to live her life um, to the best of her ability than her to continue to try to play basketball and, you know, she one day not be able to walk or, you know, just it gets in extreme. Um, obviously, you know, that's hopefully not going to happen, knock on wood. But, um, you know, these kinds of injuries always bring up those those thoughts of, I'm sure, you know, a lot of athletes and, and people that get injured and people that have to get surgeries are more so like, um, can I continue doing what I do? and not continue to hinder my future livelihood. And I think that's a big thing for a lot of people to think about. And hopefully, you know, as a fan, we want her to come back. But, um, you know, if if it's if it's to a point where, you know, she can't, then she should have, like, I know that would be a hard decision to make, but mm-hmm. you, you would choose your livelihood, I would hope at least. But I know for a lot of people, you know, people, love their sport and love what they do so they would probably still try and we've seen that in with sports we've seen that with that we've seen it with brandon roy we've seen it with greg Oden. we've seen plenty of players like just not be able to get past injuries and it really sucks because you know they have so much potential and they clearly love the sport so much and it's just hard to watch people consistently get injured and have to go through the same mental and physical battle every every couple of months every year it's just you know, it's just uh, rough to watch, um, even from afar. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, one of the things I thought of is just, you know, just the what ifs with this whole UConn team because of how much injuries that they endured throughout the season with this group. You know, you had the page injury multiple times. AZ now injured again. Um, that was injuries that you mentioned. And, you know, it's just been like a down period for – UConn, I mean, they did reach the national championship with this team once, but came up short. And, you know, they just haven't gotten – I don't want to say – I don't think they uh, – I don't know. But they just haven't been able to just have their group together. You know, I mean, some players stepped up big. Like last year we had – um Nika. It was it? It was Lou, right? Lou Lopez stepped up yeah. last year. In the show, yeah, Dork, uh, yeah, they stepped up big Nika. time. They're in the league now, um, yeah. so it's worked out for some, but for the most part, like when you look at, you know, whenever Paige committed to UConn and got there, and then Asia committed to UConn, and it was a big deal. I, it was something to look forward to. You know, we wanted to see this group together, like we wanted to see that duo together and dominate. Like when I think of UConn, I think of dominance most of the time. I think of the years where they had the star groups, groups full of All-Americans, like, 
the top players in the nation on all one squad. I mean, they still get in that talent, but it just sucks to see like I don't know, man. The potential was was the potential was crazy, bro. And yeah. they've only played definitely one of the biggest what ifs I can think of in recent memory, like team wise, man. Like who knows if this team goes to another national championship together or how great this team is together. Because, I mean, we saw Paige in her freshman season do what she do, become the Astro Player of the Year for, like, her freshman year. And then we seen, like, I don't know, man, just things just didn't work out for them or hasn't worked out for them, you know? Mm-hmm. So, as a basketball fan, it just sucks to see, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Paige and AZ only played – Paige and AZ have only played 17 games together in their three years now. Because this is AZ's junior year, Paige's senior. So, yeah, their three years playing, they've only played 17 games together. It's been like an opposite. Like, one one player has a healthy-ish season, the other team, the other player is out. Yep. It's never, like, they, they've never been, like, sustained consistency on the court. Um since they've been there. I mean, they went they went to the national championship um AZ's freshman year and then but that even that season was riddled with injuries and then last year obviously Paige missed the whole season and AZ was injured for a good bit of the season. I'll, I'll never forgive Gino for that Leave game again. And yeah. I'll never forgive Gino for that, bro. Yeah, that and that was that was like a very weird injury too. Like it yeah. wasn't like just your normal like oh like she was going up and you know something like pop like no nah, like she was running and it was just like buckle buckle it was like what just happened yeah kind of like what Jamal Burns did that one year right yeah I mean and kind of yeah. that same situation because he shouldn't have been in the game at that point either exactly so it was and like back to back it was like five, five, however many and then he put her back in the game the other night when we were playing Minnesota and we were already up like 20 he put her back in with like five minutes left and I'm like bro the game is over like if she gets hurt right now, like we gonna feel real crazy. But he might not. Like at this point, like I, I'm, I'm not saying that you know Gino don't care. I'm just saying like he probably not thinking about it. And that's why they have like assistant coaches. Where assistant coaches like, hey, you know, the game's really over. They like, pull her out. But you know, it's just it just it sucks, man. It really sucks. I was, I was uh, angry yesterday when I read it just because. Like, I don't fully understand, you know, what she's going through because I only have one surgery in my life, and that and that surgery still causes knee problems for me to this day. So I understand a little bit of it, but to have multiple surgeries, and it's the reason why I don't ever go get my knee looked at, like, because I don't want to have to go through that whole process again. And I, I just, for people that have, like, those kinds of injuries, I know those processes are, are way different, especially since they're – you know, high level athletes and they're trying to get back to uh, the highest level possible. Like, I don't even think people really think about that. Like, yeah, they're trying to get back to be able to do, to do, to, to play their sport, but they're trying to get back to play at the highest level, not just to play their sport, trying to get back to be one of the best players. And like, like AZ Fudd, like, was ranked in the top 25 players in the country this year. Like, she's, she's one of the best players in the country when she's healthy, but you always have to have the caveat of when, when she's healthy. When she's open, that asterisk. Yeah, it just sucks. Yeah. But we and can get it. Hope for first week recovery for AZ. Absolutely. Uh, hope she can get back to herself when she does come back. But we've seen how injuries have affected players throughout the years, man. And, you know, I mean, yeah. I think she'll come back fine. I'm, I'm hopeful of it. So, yeah. 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 Well, we can get to the recaps of last weekend's games now. Yes, sir. Where do you want to start? Uh, UCLA um, had a good win over Princeton. Yo, uh, Princeton, number two Princeton, in the country. Yeah, shout out I to think UCLA. Ever in program history. Shout out to UCLA. They're a very good team. Very good team. Um, they got they got some talent out there. Obviously, you got you know you got charisma and you got Kiki. You got Lauren Betts. Um, you got Gabby Hawkes. Um. You know, there's there's players all over. Um, they've got a couple of players that have been there for a few years now, so they definitely got some talent out there, and definitely uh, going to be fun to watch this season as they go through because 
they are looking like one of the one of the better teams in the country. I can't say for sure they look like the second best team in the country right now, but they definitely look like the top five team in the country right now. Um, and I think we'll know a little bit more about them after this UConn game. Um, if you're listening t- today, then they play today. Um, I think we'll know a little bit more about them after this game, but um, they 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 beat a really good Princeton team. Um, Princeton almost beat Louisville in the um, tournament last year in the first round. So Princeton is no – wait. I feel like Princeton – hold on. I feel like Princeton did win a tournament game last year. But I could be wrong. But I feel like they won one because they played Utah, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. They beat NC State. And then they um they lost to Utah. So we almost saw them last year. Uh, when we went to Greenville, we almost saw Princeton. Um Caitlin Chen is, is a really good player, man. She's she's really fun to watch at Princeton. Um their freshman Sky Belker had 20 points as well. Um Lauren Betts had 22 points, 10 rebounds, nine and nine from the field. Charisma Osborne had 21 points. Um, and then Gabby Hawkes and Kiki Rice. I want to say combined for about 23, maybe 25 points um, together. So um, a balanced win for uh, UCLA, um, a good win. Um, you know, Princeton had a chance to win it on the last shot. Um, that would have been a huge win for them. Um, but they do have a game this week that, um, you know, is, is another good game for them to prepare them for the future um, or the rest of their season because I – would be shocked if they didn't make the tournament um, this season. Um, Tanaya Latson scored 35 points in a comeback win over Florida. She had 17 points in the fourth quarter alone. Um, Tanaya Latson is a very good player. She's one of the more underrated players um, just because, you know, not a lot of people are, like, tuning into Florida State. But, I mean, she had a great freshman season last year. And I think if she was able to play in the tournament, I think that would have put a lot more eyes on her. But since she was injured and wasn't able to play, then, um, you know, people just, I don't want to say forgot about her, but didn't really realize the kind of season she had. And a lot of times a tournament, um, even like a, a conference tournament can really open people's eyes like George A. Moore last year with the ACC tournament. Um, that kind of opened people's eyes to her at Virginia Tech. Um, but Florida State's a good team. Um, they've got some talent around tonight at Lassen. Um, so and, uh, they, have a, they have a good game this week as well. Um, and they have the ACC SEC challenge on Thursday, so um, we'll we'll learn we'll learn a bit more about Florida State and the rest of their um, players um, by the time we record this next week. Yes, sir. Um, Notre Dame got a good win over Illinois. Um, Hannah Hidalgo is just crazy. Oh my goodness. She is Trent. Like I don't even. She average what, six steals still. She's probably averaging or close more. to seven. She has six steals in this game, so. At the very least, six and a half, something like that. She was averaging seven still going into this game. So, she through three games, she had 21 steals, four games, 27 steals, so like six and a half, yeah. Um, she had 24 points, five rebounds, eight assists, six steals um, against a good Illinois team. It's not a bad Illinois team. They're probably – they they have the chance to make some noise in the Big Ten. Um, Genesis Bryant um, had 30 points in this game. Um, but Dolly McKenzie had a good game as well. Um, Maddie had 24 points, eight rebounds. She went three or three from three. Um, she was pretty, she was really aggressive early in this game. I think that was important for them. Um, with no Sonia, um, no Olivia, um, KK Branchwood did make her se- uh, season debut. She had 11 points, um, six of eight from the free throw line. Her and, uh, her and Hannah were the only ones to shoot free throws. I think they went 14 to 20 from the free throw line together. Um, that's something that the post players for uh, Notre Dame do have to get better at um, as the season goes on. Um, Kylie Watson, like, she she doesn't – like, she feels contact, but she doesn't go through contact. Like, she she knows she's going to get fouled, but she doesn't go into it, so the refs don't end up calling it. Um, if she can, you know, with the aggressiveness of shooting the shot, if she can – lean into the contact and uh, accept the contact and get to the free throw line. That'll be big for her and for the team. Um, Colorado, who's ranked, I think, number four now, maybe five. 
Um, got a road win over SMU. Aaronette Vonley had 20, 23 points, five rebounds. Blake Miller had 18 and 10. Jalen Sherrod had 18 as well. Um, Colorado, they they look really good. I, I know people, you know, weren't really expecting them to beat LSU, but they had the talent, they had the experience to do it, and they've done it, or they did it, and now um, they're looking like one of the better teams in the country. And I don't think a lot of people were expecting that coming into the season. I think they're expecting them to be – um, among the top 25, but I don't think they expect them to be in the top 10. Now, I don't know if they stay in the top 10 all season, but I do expect them to be ranked for majority of the season, if not all of the season. Um, I think the the experience they got last year um, was really big. Um, I know the Duke game was, was really a turning point um, that could have gone either way, and they ended up pulling it out. Um, I think that's the game that Celeste had, had like 10 steals or something like that. Mm, um, so yeah, she had a crazy game. Yeah, I think it was like, triple double steals, double steals right? Huh? She had triple double steals, right? I think, no, I think she's like maybe a sister to away or some, something like that. She almost did. I remember I was like, dang, if she would have had a triple double steals, that would have been crazy. So it was 61 to 53. Um, Duke. Uh, she had ten. Oh, okay, she had eight points, eight assists, ten rebounds. Um. So yeah, she had a she had a big game, but that um I feel like that win for Colorado is what really you know propelled them to you know coming back this season and feeling um like they they could really um build off of that and they have. Uh, so far to this point, I mean, they they brought back almost everyone from last year, um, and they're just you know building off of that that confidence that they built from that game last year. Um, yeah, Celeste had eight points, ten rebounds, eight assists, ten steals. So she had a double double with rebounds and steals. Almost had a quadruple double. Um, That's what it was. Yeah, almost had a quadruple double. Um, Paige's homecoming game against Minnesota it was really cool to see her, you know, and see all the fans um, sell out um, the farm. I think that's what they call it. Yeah. Um, and I, I thought it was interesting. I don't know if anybody else could hear this, but I could hear like when when Paige would make a shot. Um, I could hear like normally you hear the crowd cheering, but it was it was pertinent that when she was scoring it was like little kids cheering. And I thought that was really cool. Um, especially since she was, you know, back in her home state. Um, uh, the offense was ugly for both sides. It wasn't what I was expecting um, because both teams are, so, I mean, Minnesota's a pretty good offense and you kind of supposed to be a good offense, but we haven't looked like that uh, to this point, but the defense has been absolutely elite. Um, and, you know, they, we were able to get it going, get on a run, um, and, you know, eventually win it by double digits. But, um, you know, that first half, it didn't really look good. Um, I don't even think we scored over 30 points in the first half, um, which is not like UConn at all. Um, Ali Edwards had 16 and 9. Page ended up with 12 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 blocks. Nick Mule had um, 11. Um, I like what I've seen from the young players. Uh, KK Arnold, Ashlyn Shea, Cadence Samuels. I like what they've done in the minutes that they've gotten. Um, Cadence is very, very confident. Like, you can see when she shoots the ball, she thinks she's going to make it every time. And um, that's huge, honestly, because, um, you know, obviously they started this season um, not shooting the ball very well, but she's she's done a really good job in terms of, you know, just taking what um, has come to her and not forcing anything. Um, Ashlyn Shade as well. Like, when she's gotten minutes, she's she's made plays. Um, whether it meant getting to the basket, shooting a jumper, um, making plays for somebody else. KK Arnold is just just a, a, a pest on defense. It's really a, a lot of speed. Um, so they're going to be fun to watch over the next couple of years. Um, Mar Braun struggled. Um, so did uh, Grace Kuchowski, I think is how you say her name. They both combined for five for 26 from three. So just not not a typical game for them. Um, but it was nice to see Paige and Amaya um, battle play against each other after um, being teammates for 
I guess what three years, four years at three years at Hopkins. Um, because Amaya was the year behind her. Um, but um, they talked about how how close they were off the court and how close they or they still are off the court. Um, and I thought that was really cool that they were able to see each other um, before the game and then they they met up after the game again. Um, so that was really nice to see for um, them. Uh, Maryland got a good win over Syracuse, um, which it looked kind of was, wasn't looking great for them. Um, they are actually unranked right now, which is uh, I think it's the first time I think I read that it's the first time in 13 years since they've been unranked. So um, and they are currently losing to Washington State uh, 77 to 58. So they will not be jumping back into the rankings. Um, at least over the next week or week or so, um, which is crazy because Maryland started out fast. They they were up double digits, so I thought you know they they had you know found something on the offensive end, but it looks like they're still kind of struggling. They don't really have a point guard right now. Bree McDaniel played really well, played the point guard role well against Syracuse, but she's not really you know the point guard mold. I think they have a lot of players that can do. Um, some different things, but I don't think any of them really have the means of being a point guard. Like I don't think they've ever had to, you know, really had that role. Um, so they kind of got to figure out how they're going to set up offense and, and make plays and stuff like that. But they have enough talent to, to make some noise in the, um, in the big 10. So um, I'll be surprised if we don't end up hearing from them, you know, come February and March. Um, but right now it's, you know, it's a bit of a struggle. Um, and the defense, the defense isn't what you would think it would be for a Maryland team. So, um, but last year they they got off to a slow start and they picked it back up. So they might do that again this year. I wouldn't be surprised by that. Um, Stanford got a good win in OT over Duke. That game was crazy. Um, cause it felt like Stanford, you know, was going to run away with it. Then Duke came back, took the lead. Then Stanford came back and then it was just back and forth, back and forth. Um, but I said, shout out to Duke though. Yeah. Duke played a really good game. Um, like really good game. Uh, and I'm not saying that cause I'm wearing a Duke women's basketball shirt. Um, <laughs> uh, the crazy thing is like, Duke, better. I just, I just, I really just threw this on. Like I was like, Oh, I can throw this on real quick. And, <laughs> They could have played better, honestly. Like Reagan Richardson struggled. If she makes two or three shots, they win the game. Um, but obviously, I mean, you could say that for both teams. You could say that for Hannah Jump. Duke could have won this game. A couple more shots were made. Um, obviously, but you could say that about any game, honestly. But um, I don't, uh, just a really good win uh, for like, a really good win for Stanford and a really good showing for Duke, um, especially since uh, Stanford got out to a hot start and it looked like Duke might get ran out of their own building. And they never stopped. They even ended up taking the lead. Um, Ashlyn Johnson, Ashlyn Johnson got hot at the end of the game and almost won it. Um, Cameron Brink just—I don't know. It's like every every other night. It's like this player the best player in the country. This player is the best player in the country. This player is the best player in the country. Like when you watch Juju, that's the best player. When you watch Cameron Brink, that's the best player. When you watch Lauren Brett, Lauren Best, that's the best player. Somebody on South Carolina, the whole team just crazy like you uh, it's so many talented players in the country right now that it's just like the the national player of the year conversation is going to be insane but Cameron Brink has been playing at an unreal level she had 29 points 11 rebounds six blocks two clutch free throws she um missed a free throw yesterday so her streak stopped at 73 I believe she she finished two behind the all-time streak for consecutive free throws made but for a post player to make that many free throws in a row, dating back to last February, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, I think some people probably don't forgot or overlook Cam Brink because, mm. you know, Stanford probably just doesn't have the attention. Ooh, that's well, that's that's what I wanted. There was something I tweeted and I wrote down in my notes somewhere, but I couldn't find it and I couldn't remember what I wrote. I just remembered. I think, and we talked about this last week. But I didn't go out and just say it outright. I think Cam Brink might be the number one pick. I I don't know, man. I think Cameron Brink might be the number one pick because 
let's see. I think Indiana has the best odds to get the number one pick again this year. Ah, uh, I mean, I guess if they get it, they're probably not. But if honestly, you could run wrong. the list at the three. You said what? You can run the list at the three. Right? Let's I don't see. know. Man. I don't know. That's You're just like, leave Boston down low? I was I was just thinking I'm like, how do how do these teams convince themselves to pass up on the other four to five players that they could take at that spot. And I'm like, I feel like Cam Brink might be the hardest to pass up on. Like, to tell yourself, like, no, we that's get fine. You don't just get a Cam Brink every year, bro. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, there, she's like, that's, that's totally I'm not saying you can find a, a Caitlin Page. 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 I'm not saying you can find a, a Caitlin or a Page or a Rakia anywhere. No, but they, like, they have similar molds to other players. I don't think there's a mold. Of Cam Brink in the MB- in the WNBA right now, like obviously there are players that have like her skill, like she has like molds of some similar players. Like she oh, plays she a little bit of Stewie in her game. Yeah, she plays a little bit like Stewie, Candice, yeah, Asia. Changes, like she just, has she has that mold, but I yeah. feel like she just brings something like just a little bit different. And yeah. I think it's something that we haven't really seen. And I just feel like it's gonna be hard for whoever has the number one pick to be like. No, nah, we don't want Cameron. Nah, but Cameron. I feel like it's gonna be hard for them to say that about almost anybody. Like, right? Like, whoever got the number one pick really has a lot to choose here. A lot, a lot to choose. Like, number two pick might even be hard too. Like, top three picks. Yes. Are yes. Like the third person. Like, this is really the third like person. Like, I'm getting the best third pick ever, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, like I can't even equate this to like try to even think like no draft ever really in that I can think yeah. of. I mean. Has there was been a that, in the team or that loaded to where it's like the number one pick is yeah. whatever. Not I, never, I, mean, I mean, if anybody else knows, seems like that time where it. it's been re like generational talented players at that can be picked here at number one, like some people that can change a franchise right away. Yeah, can be picked at number one. Like this example, if there's been another time that's it's been like that, please. Let us know, but if not, I don't. I don't think there has been across yeah. sports. Yeah, it's it's not to my memory, man. I mean, wild. Like even when you have like two top quarterbacks, or yeah, a couple years ago when we had Jalen Suggs, Jalen Green, Kate, Scotty, yeah. Jabari, or not Jabari, uh, Evan Mobley. Like even I'm then, you think see, like you got but, what? But, like with this one, it's just yeah. I mean, the this, draft. KD was this, drafted what? Two behind Greg Oden. Oden, yeah. Uh, you got which we call it the um O three draft. Bron. That's probably the closest one. I honestly. see you got what? Who was it? It was Bron. there was one. Oh, there was one back in the day that was crazy. Though. I just can't remember. Who was the, the second year. pick? Second pick was who? Darko. I thought he was the third pick. Oh, then it was Melo. No. Cause, all right, no, no, no. I think Darko was the third, second pick. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was and then Melo was third. Ron, Darko, Melo, Bosch. Oh, okay. Maybe. And then eighty five Jordan Draft. Or eighty four Jordan Draft tripping. Eighty four Jordan Draft. It was, it was Michael Hakeem. Yeah. Yeah, Sam Bowie and <laughs> what, Clyde? Mm, I can't remember if Clyde was in that one or not. He might have been though. I think no, no, like, possible. I don't know why I say Clyde because Sam Bowie and Clyde both play for the Blazers. So Sam Bowie got picked uh, by the Blazers. Who was that second pick? Hakeem was in there somewhere. Might have been him. I think I think Hakeem went first, then Sam Bowie went second, and then Michael went third. NBA draft. I think that's how it was. I think it was Hakeem. Because he was still Akeem at the time. Yeah, you got Hakeem, Sam Bowie, and then Jordan. That's, yeah. Charles Barkley, fifth. I don't think we have a Sam Bowie in this draft. That's all I'm going to say. No, no, no. Ain't no, ain't no damn Sam Bowie. Nah. Nah, but, um, yeah, nah, it's – Cam Brink is one of the ones. Nah, yeah, absolutely. Like I, said, I feel like people might have forgotten about Cam Brink last year for whatever reason. Um, I know Stanford may didn't make it that far into the to mm-hmm. the tournament last year. Um, 
Yeah, I just think people just forgot who Cam Brink was. She's reminding folks now. Yeah, when she's on the court, Stanford looks like a top five team in the country. When she's off, they look like I don't. Know, they're definitely not a bad team. They just look. Mm, they don't look as. They just don't look as good. Like it's just when she's on the court, she can she can make a lot out of less if that makes sense like she can make things happen when there's really nothing going on and if she's not on the court they don't really have that kiki's really good but um you know if camera's not in the game then they can really key in on her um but when camera's in the game like she's blocking shots she's pushing in transition she's you know making passes she's getting to the rim she's getting to the free throw line and she don't miss she only missed one free throw this year so that's crazy. It's it's just it's just really crazy how how talented she is, and she's only she's only getting started, bro. She's she's gonna get better and better. Um, I will bounce back with a win over Drake. Uh, mm-hmm. Caitlin had 30, 35 and ten, seven steals. Kate Martin had twenty five. So it was good to see. It was good to see uh, Iowa as a team really step up in this game after you know conversations we were having last week about if they would be able to um, replicate the season they had last year with this current roster. Um, still not sure, um, but this is a step in the right direction for them um, against a Drake team that, you know, gave them problems last year and they brought back pretty much everybody. Um, uh, preview slash recap of uh, the Thanks- Thanksgiving weekend games. Uh, we've had yes. a few so far. We've had yes. a few already. Um, Ole Miss won the battle for Atlantis, beating Howard, Arizona, and Michigan. Um, they have not given up. They have not given up more than sixty-three points since the Oklahoma game early this season. Um, South Carolina beat South. Uh, yeah, South Ole Miss. Yeah, Ole Miss has not given up more than sixty-three points since the Oklahoma loss. Damn. Yeah, and they played three back-to-back pretty good teams in in Howard, Arizona, and Michigan. Um, especially playing a Pac-12 team that they all pride themselves on scoring. So, um, but they, I mean, they just this. Most of this team just beat Stanford last year, so yeah, uh, shouldn't be super surprised. Um, South Carolina beat South, uh, South Dakota State. Uh, no Sahina, no Tessa Johnson. Um, Cardoso really dominated after the first quarter was pretty close. Um, she ended up with twenty three and ten, six blocks. David Johnson, who won, I think, uh, SEC Player of the Week. SEC Player of the Week. Um, eighteen point six rebounds, five or eighteen point six assists, five steals. Um, the team went zero of twelve from three, but they didn't allow more than 13 points in a quarter from South Dakota State, so it really didn't matter. Um, South Dakota State scored 13 in the first quarter, and I think they scored 9, then 10, and then 9. So they really locked them down after the first quarter. And they honestly locked them down in the first quarter, just not to South Carolina standards. Um, it felt like, at least. It felt like they were getting some easier shots in the first quarter, and they kind of shut those down. Um, Stanford got a tough one over Belmont. Again, Cameron Brink had 27 and 16. She had 22 and 13 in the second half alone. Um, Kiki had 14 and 9, and Brooke Dimitri and Courtney Ogden gave some good minutes um, off the bench. Um, Ohio State turned up their defense in the second half to get a win over Oklahoma State last night. Um, Jesse Sheldon had 22 points, six rebounds, five assists, four steals. Taylor Theory had 14 points, six rebounds, four assists. And Cody McMahon had 14 points, six rebounds, and four assists. Cody McMahon does not look like a sophomore. Um, and I said she didn't look like a freshman last year, and I'll probably say she doesn't look like a junior next year. Um, she's just super talented. Her athleticism, her strength, her speed, it's just – you don't really see that. Um, it's just crazy. Like, she can run down the court full speed, hit an easy spin move, lay it up off the glass, um, just effortless. She's just a, a joy to watch in this defense. Um, it's going to be fun to watch as the season continues and they get, you know, more acclimated to each other um, after adding Celeste um, to the backcourt and things like that. Um, um, last night, uh, another game we had was Juju Watkins, scored seven straight points um, in the final two minutes, including the game winner to beat uh, Penn State, who threw everything they could at Juju Watkins in this game. Uh, she had 31 points, 12 rebounds. It's her first career double-double. Both teams shot 40% from the field. So both teams' defenses really were locked in. I mean, you had to you had to really work to score in this game, and um, it was fun to watch because 
you could see like the different ways that they were trying to slow down Juju and you know there was there were times where like it would work for like a few minutes and then she would figure it out and then they had to throw something different um and it's, she's just I don't I don't even know what else you can say about Juju Watkins man I mean she's a freshman oh my goodness bro bro her, she her team, she's 30 ball 30 magnet bro she's already matched Lisa Leslie's freshman freshman year um record for 30 point games in a handful of games yeah it's crazy what five i think maybe six like and it's not just against like bad it's not just against like you know your your lower tier schools like penn state ohio state two pretty good defenses like penn state is playing some good defense ohio state one of the best defenses in the country so for her to you know do it to these teams is, is really really impressive um Thanksgiving Day slate, uh, Maryland just lost to Washington State. Uh, Washington State got a good win over them. Um, so Washington State will probably move up in the rankings. Even though Maryland's not ranked, it's still a really good team. Um, and they're not an easy team to beat, especially on a neutral floor. Um, Oklahoma and Princeton play today. Should be a high-scoring matchup. I'm really looking forward to that one. Uh, Tennessee and Indiana in a ranked matchup tonight. Um, that'll be a fun one as well. Um I don't know if Rakia Jackson is playing, but they played relatively well without her. They haven't um, – I think they've won two games without her to this point, maybe three. Um, but Indiana – I feel like Indiana probably needs this win after the uh, Stanford showing. They got smacked by Stanford. So, um, I feel like they'll they'll come out and really want to, you know, attack this game. Um, Kansas plays uh, Virginia Tech on Friday, which would be today if you're listening to the episode. Um, Indiana and Princeton uh, play Saturday. UConn and Kansas play Saturday. Colorado and NC State play Saturday. Tennessee and Oklahoma play on Saturday. Um, Wednesday, Notre Dame and Tennessee play, which is, you know, always a good one. Always uh, a, a rivalry there with Notre Dame and Tennessee with um, Muffy McGraw and, oh, my God, no way I'm blanking on her name right now. Pat Summit, oh, my God. Pat Summit and Muffin McGraw. Relax, 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 relax. Sir. Relax. Sir. I was blanking on her name. We're not about, don't do that. I was blanking. I'm there's a no there's a lot of things going through my head. I know, right I know. Here. I'm just giving you a hard time. Like you give me a hard time. Um, but yeah, I mean, Notre Dame and Tennessee has always been a big time matchup in women's basketball. Um, it'll be in Knoxville. So uh this is a game where I expect Hannah Hidalgo to really, you know, step up. Maddie Westbrook is going to have to step up as well because I, I, I'm I, assuming Sonya Strong's not playing. She had a brace on her knee. Um, That's another and, team. And her leg was – um Injury bug, man. Her leg was extended on the bench. So, I don't expect her to play in this game. Um, but KK Bransford is back, so that's good for them. Um, and then the ACC SEC Challenge. Thursday is Louisville versus Ole Miss, South Carolina versus uh, North Carolina, Arkansas versus Florida State, and Virginia Tech versus LSU. Um, some 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 fun matchups. Uh, Louisville and Ole Miss should be a good one. Uh, two gritty teams. You know, Louisville likes to play a lot of defense, uh, make them work on offense. Ole Miss is going to try to lock down everybody they play. Um, shout out to Coach Yo, man. She's she's. She's hilarious. I love uh, watching her coach. I love uh, seeing her on on social media. Um, South Carolina and North Carolina is a good one. Um, I'm very interested to see how North Carolina, um, you know, how their defense will match up with South Carolina. Um, and then Virginia Tech and LSU is a, is a rematch of last year's Elite Eight. No, Final Four. Yeah, last year's Final Four. Um Angel probably won't play in this game. So it'll be interesting to see how they uh, go about this game. Um, I know Virginia Tech's going to want to win this game, uh, you know, to get their revenge. It's not going to be the same because, you know, you don't go to the national championship if you win this game. But, um, you know, they already lost to Iowa. You don't want to lose to Iowa and LSU before um, conference play just to give you some, you know, confidence going into March uh, later in the year. Um, But one of the – Marquee matchups that we are going to talk about before we get out of here is UConn UCLA. I think um, this is big for both teams. I think UCLA needs this kind of game. Um, 
on their resume. If they can win this game, I think that propels them to a different um, confidence level. And I think for UConn, um, the offense has really struggled and that this is a game where they need the offense to step up. Um, obviously, their defense has been elite to this point, but um, you can't expect every team to shoot the ball poorly, um, especially a team like this that has talent everywhere. And I'm very, very intrigued by the matchup of Lauren Betts and um, Aaliyah Edwards. I'm not really sure how they're going to um, how they're going to defend her. They're going to have to double her at least. Um, but we'll see how that goes. Well, what are your thoughts on the UConn and UCLA matchup? Man, that is a matchup to be locked into, man. Um, we got Agreed. two great teams, two great programs in sports in general. Um, it should be a fun matchup to watch. Definitely want to see how – I don't know. I, I wish I could watch the game live. But – um. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna be tapped into that. Um, I'll have to just look at the replay, but I know it's gonna be a good good game. You know, like you got top team, you got number two team UCLA up against another top team in UConn. I mean, who's been trying to find their way mm-hmm. with the past, you know, a couple of seasons or throughout this season, really. And you know, with Paige mm-hmm. being back, that helps them out a lot. Paige, Leah Edwards, you know they they still got they, they still got some. They still got some 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 killers on the squad, so um, it's an intriguing matchup to to see. I love whenever these like I like non-con play, but not mm-hmm. like non-con play to where like you know you got a top D one school that gets a mid major. Like I don't yeah. like that. I like the non-con. This Stop is the play. point. Like if Stop I know Western. a lot of people don't pay attention to college basketball until March or until like leading up to March. But Thanksgiving, like Feast Week, is the time to pay attention to college basketball if you want to, you know. Yeah. Like, it's a slow period for the NBA a little bit. I mean, in-season tournaments change that. Um, NFL is mid. Um, Damn. But, <laughs> like, if you want to tune into some good hoops, some good, this, like, this gives you that March feel without it being March. Like, you got a lot of these – uh um Thanksgiving type tournaments or whatever. Um you know, Battle for Atlantis, Maui, different classics and stuff. So it's good for the game. And men's side, women's side, that's when you happen to see, like randomly get to see, you know, if things go well, you get to see the two two of the top ten teams play against each other. Like Maui was crazy. Speaking on the men's side, you had number one team against what number four? I want to say, yeah, no, or or That's number two versus, I think it was two versus four, two versus four, and then maybe like what one versus seven or something. I don't know, something like that, yeah, something like that, yeah. Um, and you see, like, see a big upset like you did with Marquette in um Kansas, so um. I'm speaking more so on the men's side, but women's side too. It's a lot of good tournaments, a lot of good action. So, yeah, I'm grateful that I were able to see a non-con matchup like this leading into a week like SEC versus ACC. So, I mean, just good good hoops all around. Not that any of these teams are in SEC or the ACC, but they're just in two, two of the better teams in on the women's side of things. Yeah, um, I'm definitely, definitely excited for this game. I'm excited for a lot of these games. Um, but I can't wait to see what happens and be able to come back and talk about it next week. Um, but, yeah, I think these are the kind of games that really give you a, a, a hint of who has the lead for National Player of the Year because these are the games where you're playing other elite talent and you're not just playing your conference. Um, mm-hmm. Not saying that there's not other elite talent in your conference, but, you know, when you play these top teams and you have a big uh, match, a, a big game, like Cameron Brink playing against Duke, I mean, they weren't ranked at the time. I don't think they were ranked at the time, but playing um, at Duke, or not, I think it was at Stanford, but playing um, playing a Duke team like that and, and doing that on a national stage, I think, 
um, is always good for people, you know, to get um, their spotlight. And that's how players end up getting um, awards and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, man, we got a good slate of games this weekend. Um, definitely a lot to look forward to over this next week. Yeah, absolutely. Ton of games. So if you ain't if you ain't watching some games, if you're not already watching games today and you're not watching games Friday and Saturday, I don't know what you know. I don't know what you're doing, but. I know what I'm gonna be doing, and I'm gonna have full box, full box, full box. Oh, nah, I can't have that many full boxes. But y'all know the full boxes. Hey, stay up. You got it. <laughs> if just know if there's games on and I'm not tweeting, that means I'm absolutely locked in to yeah. every game I can. Yeah. Just know, just know that I even bought flow hoops. Can you can you imagine yeah, that? Send me, send me send me your password, bro. I even had to do flow hoops. <laughs> send me your password. I went look. I was like, oh, it might be like a little free trial. It might be like fourteen. Why well, get another thing? Talking about the thirty. I'm like, boy, thirty, thirty, thirty. Nah, bro. I'll I'll, I'll gladly a discount. I was able to get a little discount, but I was like, bro, y'all lucky. I want to see you kind of UCLA play. And then I see like, ah Juju play. Ohio State plays. I was like, oh, I'm gonna have I to catch the recap or replay it at. <laughs> I'm not paying thirty dollars, man. I'll, I'll I'll gladly watch that bot score for free ninety nine. But they've been, they've been putting them on. They, they're, uh, well, their Twitter their Twitter has been putting them on Twitter like live streaming them on Twitter. So if they live stream the UConn game on there, I'm gonna be mad. I'm gonna be real mad because I didn't have to pay for that. Let me go ahead and follow them then. USC's game was on it last last night. U- USC and Penn State game was on. Mm. A couple games, I was like, oh, they probably won't do it for every game. And I saw USC and Penn State was on. I was like, well, damn. I said, if y'all giving us Juju Watkins for free, y'all for sure giving us Paige and, and Lauren Betts for free. So, if, if I see that. Oh, hold on. Breaking news. Andrew Reese doesn't appear to be with the team at the Cayman Islands Classic. LSU walked into Thursday <laughs> practice without her. It's unclear if Reese traveled to Grand Cayman Islands with LSU. We already knew that. We saw her TikTok. She was still in her dorm. Mm. No, I didn't see her TikTok. Oh, I thought you saw it. I saw it yesterday. She yeah. was still in her or she was still in her dorm room. And somebody was like, "Well, yeah, she's not with the team." And I was like, oh, yeah. mm. "If she's still in her dorm and they're all already in the islands, then yeah, she's not there." <laughs> but yeah, man. Um. Really good, really good weekend of, of women's hoops, man. I'm excited. I'm excited. Oh, wow, the whole game is right here, yo. Yep. That's what I'm saying. If I if I see it tomorrow, I'm gonna be pissed. I'm like, but no way, I paid 25 hours for that. But you gotta do what you gotta do when you're trying to cover the sport the right way. So it happens. I just remember the last time I was trying to cancel. They was trying to they was trying to keep. It. I'm like, nah, bro, I'm good. Like. Let me cancel. Golly, bro. Shit. They're like, nah, bro. We ain't letting you change. You can't, you can't cancel, bro. Like, yes, I can, bro. Watch. But, yeah. Uh, that's all I had. Oh, I can watch the whole replay. Game replay right here. Yeah. I'm keeping my 30 dollars. <laughs> Respectfully. That's going to my Black Friday shopping. <laughs> Anyways, man. Thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of the Hoodie and Headband podcast show y'all keep running up the way y'all have been man i really appreciate y'all really really appreciate y'all for show ski <laughs> what you supposed to end the show <laughs> anyways man, thank you guys for tuning in to another episode no, let's we'll see y'all uh, what tuesday uh yes, Tuesday. All right, Tuesday. <laughs>